Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless the world's doomsday clock has remained at 90 seconds to midnight the same level as in 2023 but scientists warn it's not a sign of stability they say there's an unprecedented level of risk driven by war climate change and ai scientists are calling on world governments to act urgently on environmental issues and have raised concern about the growing arsenals of nuclear weapons. The trends continue to point ominously towards global catastrophe. The war in Ukraine, an expanding conflict in the Mideast, and saber rattling from North Korea, just some of the many security threats facing world leaders in 2024. Those threats prompting the Bulletin of Atomic Scientists to keep their doomsday clock set as close to annihilation as ever before. Just 90 seconds to midnight, the theoretical point of global destruction. We once again set the doomsday clock to express a continuing and unprecedented level of risk. The scientists created the doomsday clock back in 1947, reflecting nuclear tensions during the early days of the Cold War. Since then, it's been updated every year to warn society how close it's coming to destroying the world. This year, the group cited several ominous new trends, including the first expansion of the U.S. nuclear arsenal in decades to keep pace with similar expansions in China and Russia. In many ways, we're uh, setting ourselves up for it three-way uh, arms race, which is uh, unprecedented and, and quite uh, concerning. So the picture is quite bleak. It is evident that planet Earth is in the time Jesus refers to as the birth pains. The world is seeing death, destruction, and despair at unprecedented levels. The events the world is suffering through right now, awful as they are, will only get worse. The Bible tells us in the last days, right before Jesus returns, there will be a time of severe distress this world has never seen or ever will see again, as we read in Matthew 24, 21. For then there will be great tribulation, just as it has not been since the beginning of the world until this time, no, nor ever shall be. This time of distress Jesus is referring to is called the seven-year tribulation, in which the inhabitants of planet Earth, who have rejected God and remain unrepentant in their sin, will face his wrath. These terrible judgments are pictured as seven seals opened, seven trumpets blown, and seven bowls poured out, the first four of the seven seals are known as the four horsemen of the apocalypse. The book of Revelation tells us when Jesus breaks the first seal and the white horse rides, the Antichrist will be unleashed. When Jesus breaks the second seal and the red horse rides, war will be unleashed. When Jesus breaks the third seal and the black horse rides, famine will be unleashed. When Jesus breaks the fourth seal and the pale horse rides, death and Hades will be unleashed. The Bible tells us 25% of the population of the earth will be killed at this time as we read in Revelation 6, 8. So I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and the name of him who sat on it was Death, and Hades followed with him. And power was given to them over a fourth of the earth, to kill with the sword, with hunger, with death, and by the beasts of the earth. The population of the world is roughly 8 billion, meaning 2 billion people will die during this time. The remaining 17 judgments of God include devastating earthquakes, cosmic disturbances, scorching heat, meteors, 100-pound hailstones, volcanic eruptions, loathsome sores on those who take the mark of the beast, the seas, rivers, and springs of water turn to blood, demons torturing mankind, and a 200 million strong demonic army who will kill another third of mankind, bringing the total to 4 billion. The Bulletin of the Atomic Scientists say the major factors for the clock's positioning include the ongoing wars in Ukraine and Gaza, climate change, and even advancements in artificial intelligence. Scientist Bill Nye shared his concerns about the rise of AI. But the trouble with artificial intelligence is we don't know what's going to come out. So what if these fire control systems, as they're called, interact in a way that's unpredictable and... If the science guy says, we should all be concerned. Activists warn the clock is ticking to prevent killer robots getting out of human control. Militaries around the world are using all kinds of AI-powered devices to save and take lives. 
The world's most cited expert on the topic has told Sky News limits need to be put in place. Our science and tech correspondent Breno Halloran reports on the push to stop a Terminator-style takeover. This probably won't quell the fears of AI doomsayers. Come on, cut. React. Nadia the robot was originally designed to do tasks too dangerous for humans. Her creators soon recognised she also packs a punch. They're not actually running the arms nearly as fast as they can go. Uh, they're not really hitting very hard either. And we think that we can make them at least 30% faster and hit a lot harder. Nadia is a novel example of what some see as a dangerous trend. Artificial intelligence being used for combat. Whilst Pandora's box is opening, we still have the opportunity to act now. <laughs> AI was first used in war with guided Tomahawk missiles in the 1990s. It's now helping humans kill each other in a variety of ways. The Israeli military is using AI targeting in its bombardment of Gaza. Drones which fly themselves are being used in Ukraine. While the US has more than 800 AI-related unclassified projects, including the recently announced Replicator program, aiming to make thousands of autonomous vehicles by 2026. We are increasingly moving towards human supervised warfare as opposed to humans in warfare. Former Navy pilot Dr. Missy Cummings has testified before Congress, advised the current and past US presidents, and authored the most cited research on the military use of AI. She told Sky News a Hollywood style robot takeover is unlikely but more needs to be done to ensure humans remain in control of ai powered weapons if we hold people companies accountable for mistakes both on the battlefield but also in the commercial civilian world that's how we're going to ensure that these technologies don't get out of control in november australia signed the declaration of responsible military use of artificial intelligence and autonomy it was written by the U.S., is non-binding, and some of the world's largest militaries haven't signed on to it. The United Nations Secretary General and human rights groups are calling for new international AI laws. We're seeing more and more autonomy being researched and developed, and what we're not seeing is adequate controls or any guardrails putting in place around this. AI is, of course, a broad term, and most experts believe regulation around the military use of AI should be specific. Examples include banning fully autonomous targeting and banning AI involvement with nuclear weapons systems. The countries that make it through this are going to be countries that are cautiously optimistic, but have good checks and balances in place. Artificial intelligence is facilitating killing on a mass scale. If the robots do revolt, they likely won't just be throwing fists. In the last days, the book of Daniel prophesied that knowledge would increase. Daniel 12.4 But you, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall increase. There are many prophecies in Daniel's time that could not come to fulfillment because the technology had not yet been invented. That is why Daniel was told to shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. One of those prophecies is found in Matthew 24, verses 21 and 22. For then there will be great tribulation, such as has not been since the beginning of the world until this time, no, nor ever shall be. And unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. Flesh is the Greek word sarx, which means flesh, body, human nature, especially a human being. Matthew 24, 22 can be translated like this. And unless those days were shortened, no human nature would be saved, but for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. If Jesus did not return and shorten the days, there would be no human nature saved. Either mankind will merge with artificial intelligence, or artificial intelligence will completely destroy mankind as the dominant species. Jesus said, as a sign of his coming and the end of the age, there would be an increase in deception, false Christ who will deceive many, wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, Christian persecution, apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. The threat of an all-out war in the Middle East is intensifying. 
Iranian-backed forces have launched a wave of attacks against U.S. and Israeli targets in the region. The White House accuses Tehran of provoking the crisis and prompting an American military response. George Thomas has more. The Islamic mullahs in Tehran have dubbed it their axis of resistance. Uh, what the uh, supreme leader there calls his ring of fire around Israel is to build up these terror groups, these proxies for Iran, to do the fighting for Iran so that Iran doesn't have anybody come knocking on its doorstep. Since Hamas attacked Israel on October 7th, Iranian proxies in Lebanon, Syria, Iraq, and Yemen have dramatically upped their strikes against Israel and U.S. interests in the region. Iran didn't uh, arm and equip and train and finance the Houthis, Hamas, Hezbollah, uh, Shia militia groups in, uh, in Iraq. Uh, to use these resources for their own benefit at their own discretion. Iran did all that so it would have a capability through its proxies to act as it's acting now. The U.S. responding with attacks on the proxy militias. We have taken military action against sites in Iraq and Syria that are also tied to the IRGC, uh, which supports these militias. We have said quite clearly that we hold Iran responsible uh, for the groups, the proxies uh, that, uh, that it supports and that it provides weapons to. Iran's Revolutionary Guard forces in just the past week have also launched direct attacks on three of their close neighbors, Iraq, Syria and Pakistan. These multiple flashpoints now causing concern of a much broader conflict pitting Iran and its allies against Israel and the United States. It just shows just how dangerous the situation is in the wider Middle East. It's all part of their strategy, but ultimately, they want us to be fighting these tentacles so that we get bogged down and distracted. What we really need to focus on is the head of the octopus, and that's Iran. Iranian-backed militias have launched more than 140 rocket and drone attacks against U.S. troops in Iraq and Syria since October 7th, the most serious attack happening at the Al-Assad Air Base in western Iraq this past weekend. CENTCOM reporting that a number of U.S. personnel sustained traumatic brain injuries. It was a very serious attack uh, using a capability of uh, ballistic missiles uh, that posed a genuine threat. Richard Goldberg, who handled the Iranian portfolio at the White House National Security Council, says such actions show Iran is clearly undeterred and has no reason to rein in its proxies, whether it's Houthi rebels targeting shipping vessels in the Red Sea or militias attacking our U.S. troops in Syria. But remember, Iran is looking at the big picture here, and the Biden administration's policy is still to give money to Iran while all of this is going on. We have $10 billion flowing from a Biden sanctions waiver today that the Iranians are benefiting from. We should start believing what they say. What they say is that Israel is the little Satan and we are the great Satan. H how do you negotiate with that? H how do you continue to fund that? They have no interest in peace. They want to wipe Israel off the map. They want to create this vast Muslim empire, re reinstate all of that. That's their goal. They hope within the chaos that will come from that, that a Mahdi will appear in a well in Iran. They, they hope all of these things are quite dedicated to it. So why don't we believe them when they say these things? Uh, why, why do we say, oh no, there's peace possible. Let, let's continue negotiations. Uh, they aren't really going to try to develop a, a nuclear weapon. All of the, the things that are happening right now, the chaos, the, the various tentacles that are acting and, and we're being forced to respond, is trying to hide what they are clearly doing. They want to acquire a nuclear weapon. And when they do, we can be assured they will use it. According to Revelation 6-2 and Daniel 9-27, the Antichrist will pose as a man of peace, ready to set the world right. It is easy to see how the Antichrist, promising a false peace, could be welcomed by a world hungry for a ceasefire along with peace and security. In fact, Jesus warned that the Antichrist would mimic the true Messiah and be accepted by those who rejected Christ, as we read in John 5.43. I have come in my Father's name, and you do not receive me. If another comes in his own name, him you will receive.
If you think this world is going to get better, or if you think there's going to be world peace, if you are waiting for utopia, then you will be disappointed big time. As we are hurling toward Armageddon, the Bible says that there will appear a character on the world stage, an individual known as the man of lawlessness. He will make false promises of world peace, harmony, and hope. He will lull the world into believing in him, even worshiping him as their Messiah. But he will end up abusing humanity like they have never been tormented before. Christians know him as the Antichrist. Sunni Muslims know him as the Muslim Christ. Shiite Muslims know him as the Mahdi. But after a brief temporary success, he will be defeated and destroyed by our coming King Jesus Christ, our true Savior. Just as he promised, Jesus will return to judge the living and the dead and take his true followers to heaven. He is coming for us, and it won't be long. He could come in the next minute, or the next week, or the next year. He is coming soon. Are you ready? This morning, North Korea fired a number of cruise missiles into the Yellow Sea, coming just 10 days after its last missile provocation. Another missile provocation by Pyongyang. South Korea's Joint Chiefs of Staff said North Korea fired multiple cruise missiles at around 7 a.m. on Wednesday into its waters in the West Sea. It added that the military had increased surveillance activities and was closely coordinating with the U.S. It's been 10 days since Pyongyang last carried out a missile provocation. On January 14th, the regime claimed it had successfully launched a hypersonic solid-fuel intermediate-range ballistic missile. Experts say cruise missiles can fly very low and are harder to detect as they're beneath radar coverage. Cruise missiles can also hit targets precisely from long range, which is why North Korea is developing them as a military option. But since they are slow, they can be shot down if detected. Ballistic missiles, on the other hand, are powered initially by a rocket and because of their high speed are extremely difficult to shoot down. It's for these reasons the UN Security Council has only banned North Korean ballistic missile launches. But the experts say North Korea's cruise missiles can pose just as much of a threat. It's not a violation of UN Security Council resolutions, but last year, when North Korea unveiled its tactical Hwasong-31 nuclear warhead, it claimed the weapon could be carried on a cruise missile, so they still pose a great threat. Another expert, a former commander of South Korea's special forces, said military provocations by Pyongyang pose a threat to not only South Korea, but to the world. North Korea is known for its uh, very belligerent language, and because North Korea exports these weapons, it has uh, worldwide implications. General Chun added that the South Korean military will remain vigilant at all times. Russia and Ukraine are blaming each other after the apparent downing of a plane that Russia says was carrying dozens of Ukrainian prisoners of war who were supposed to be released today in a prisoner exchange. This cell phone video captured the moment the Russian military plane fell from the sky. Good God, she screams. On the ground, the snow-covered wreckage is spread across a field in the western Belgorod region. Moscow has accused Ukrainian forces of shooting the plane down, killing all on board, including Ukrainian soldiers who were to be released as part of a prisoner exchange. There were six crew members on board and 65 Ukrainian servicemen for exchange, he says. All the crew and passengers have died. CBS News cannot independently verify who was on board or what caused the plane to crash. But a spokesperson for Ukrainian military intelligence did say a prisoner exchange had been planned for today. The issue of POWs is deeply sensitive for both countries. Since the start of the war nearly two years ago, both sides have carried out 49 prisoner exchanges, with Kyiv saying more than 8,000 Ukrainians remain behind bars in Russia, including civilians. Ukraine's military still hasn't directly addressed the Kremlin's claims or the crash itself, instead calling out Russian missile attacks in the eastern city of Kharkiv, Ukraine's second largest, 
and the capital, Kyiv, that have killed 18 people and injured more than 130 over the past 24 hours. A Fox News alert, the Navy intercepts two missiles launched by Houthi rebels that were targeting a U.S. container ship in the Gulf of Aden. Trey Yinks live in Tel Aviv with more. Trey. More developments out of the Middle East where yesterday Iran-backed Houthi rebels fired three anti-ship ballistic missiles at a U.S. flag container ship. Now, according to U.S. Central Command, the incident took place in the Gulf of Aden, just south of Yemen. Two out of the three missiles were intercepted by a nearby American Navy destroyer, the USS Gravely. One missile did splash into the sea nearby. The attack came as the United States launched its ninth round of strikes against the Houthis in just two weeks. Now, yesterday, the Houthis claimed they hit an American military ship, but they provided no evidence to support that claim. Further north in Iraq, American officials and their local counterparts are expected to begin talks about the future of the U.S. presence in Iraq. Currently, there are around 2,500 American troops stationed there as part of the U.S.-led coalition against ISIS. Now, those forces have become a main target for Iranian proxies that have launched more than 150 attacks against them since mid-October. With the war between Israel and Hamas at day 111, there are no signs that conflict will be dying down anytime soon, and thus the attacks against American forces across the region are expected to continue. Now, with each of these attacks against U.S. forces, there is a risk of dragging the entire region into a broader war. Remember, those forces inside Iraq and also inside Yemen are trying to kill American troops. So far, they've been unsuccessful. Is global chaos the new normal? As anyone can plainly see, the world is in a state of decay, moral, economic, political, every way possible. People are saying the world is out of control and looking for someone, anyone, to rescue the planet. Soon, very soon, a leader will appear on the horizon that appears to have all the answers, to calm the oceans, to bring peace to all the nations. His title will be the Antichrist, and he will be welcomed by millions of those on earth not taken with the rapture. Unfortunately, his true identity will be known soon to those left behind, but his true intentions are death, destruction, and control. So yes, Global chaos is the new normal until the Lord Jesus Christ comes at the end of the Antichrist's seven-year reign of terror and establishes true peace on earth. It seems like a good time for Satan to present the lawless one to the world. 2 Thessalonians 2, 7-12 For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan, with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion, that they should believe the lie that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. This morning, millions waking up to the threat of flash flooding. From Louisiana to West Virginia. In Texas, they're cleaning up after parts of the state getting over eight inches of rainfall. San Jacinto County under a disaster declaration after increased water levels from the Lake Livingston Dam flooding homes in the nearby valley. Vehicles abandoned, some completely submerged. Residents desperate for aid. You don't know where you're going to be living after it's all over with. Across the southern plains, this morning communities inundated by relentless rain are gearing up for another round of heavy showers and flooding. That's my mom's mailbox to turn into her driveway. A new band expected to dump inches of rain today from eastern Texas to Tennessee. But another round of storms is set to come through. Rainfall already pouring as much as 10 to 12 inches in parts of Louisiana and Texas, causing terrifying road conditions. This driver near Houston hoisted up from his vehicle after it hydroplaned off the road, swept up in the fast moving water. 
Others risking the flooded roadways, while firefighters in Montgomery County spent the day conducting rescues in flooded areas. The torrential downpour creating havoc for authorities too. This officer attempting to block off an intersection going too far and getting submerged in high waters just off an interstate. As the south gets drenched, parts of the northeast are glazed by freezing rain and slick ice, while the west coast prepares for more rain, wind and snow. In Ethiopia, more than 67,000 children are out of school due to recent El Nino-induced floods in Ethiopia's southeastern Somali region. That's according to the United Nations Children's Fund. According to UNICEF, flooding has affected 227 schools across four zones in the Somali region. 139 schools have been closed, while 88 are partially damaged. The UN agency says the Somali region is a predominantly pastoralist one and faces recurring problems such as drought and conflict. In November of last year, UNICEF say that 7.6 million children were out of school in Ethiopia as the country encountered natural and man-made calamities. Some 833,000 affected people need humanitarian support, and that's according to the UN agency. The Democratic Republic of Congo is also faced with heavy flooding. A United Nations agency says more than 350,000 people in the country are in urgent need of life-saving assistance. The UN Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs says the flooding is the worst the DRC has seen in 60 years. Sijijens Kriso Chamringa has more from Kinshasa. Hundreds of thousands of families have still not recovered from severe flooding last October when heavy rains caused the Congo River to burst its banks. People have been forced to flee their homes in the capital Kinshasa and the western city of Mbandaka. Authorities say at least 13 of the country's 26 provinces have been affected by the floods. The UN agencies are supporting the DRC government in providing relief supplies. According to the Congolese authorities, more than 400,000 households need emergency assistance, including food, shelter and health care support. Some families live in their flooded houses, increasing the risk of course, of waterborne diseases, which could potentially overwhelm an already strained health care system. Humanitarian agencies say they are in urgent need of financial support to assist the flood victims in the DRC. On Wednesday, the UN Emergency Response Fund allocated 3.6 million US dollars for 270,000 people with the most pressing needs. But authorities say the flooding has affected more than 1.8 million people across the DRC. Many people have resorted to using canoes and boats to get to work and their homes. The DRC government has declared a state of emergency and formed a multi-sectoral committee to coordinate the response effort. Psalm 917 The wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. From the air and on the ground, hundreds of firefighters and soldiers from the Colombian army have been battling around the clock against dozens of forest fires burning across the country. In the capital, Bogota, there are at least six fires in the city's surrounding hills, some of them close to buildings and houses. Emergency teams are using hoes, rakes and machetes to create fire breaks on the sloping hills to contain the fires. Some hotspots are still active. They are being contained, but at night, because of the high altitude and the winds, they flare up again, creating new fires. On the streets of Bogota, many are wearing masks to deal with the worsening air quality. Schools and universities close to the fire were closed and dozens of flights cancelled or delayed due to low visibility. It's the worst I have seen in many years and I have been living three blocks from here for 45 years. Experts say a particularly severe dry season compounded by El Nino weather phenomenon, which typically produces hotter and drier weather, together with climate change, are to blame. But they're not excluding a human hand in some of the outbreaks. Overall, Colombia has put out more than 200 fires this month across much of the country, around eight per day, as cities and towns face record temperatures. The government says it has already spent almost half of the budget set out for confronting El Nino. President Gustavo Petro declared a natural disaster to transfer more resources to fight the fires and pleaded for international help. 
Meteorologists fear that this could be just the beginning of an extended and possibly unprecedented dry spell that could bring more fires and droughts across much of the country. And many also fear that Colombia might be ill-prepared for it. Psalm 107, 33 and 34. He turns rivers into a wilderness, and the water springs into dry ground, a fruitful land into barrenness, for the wickedness of those who dwell in it. This year's historic drought in the Amazon has led to a profound environmental and human crisis, capturing headlights worldwide. It's common for rivers to lower during the dry season, but not to this extent. This drastic reduction has severely affected the livelihoods of local communities, and the environmental impact has been profound. The deaths of hundreds of freshwater dolphins being a particularly visible consequence. While the El Niño conditions in the Pacific are largely blamed for this phenomenon, one big question remained. What role did climate change play in this extreme weather event? Researchers from the International Scientific Group, World Climate Attribution, say it was a major factor, with global warming 30 times more likely to reduce river flows, while also contributing to higher temperatures and diminished rainfall. Extreme weather events like the drought in the Amazon have been happening all over the world, and more than ever, researchers are attempting to scientifically connect them to climate change. The world is baffled at the events taking place in the weather. And yet, it was foretold 2,000 years ago in Bible prophecy that this would happen. Satan, the great deceiver, often tries to front-run God by giving people wrong ideas ahead of time about what is prophesied to happen. Satan has tricked mankind into believing that climate change is real and in turn has blinded many people to the gospel of Jesus Christ, as we read in 2 Corinthians 4, 3 and 4. But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age is blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. Jesus said a sign of his return would be more frequent and more intense weather, as we read in Matthew 24, 7 and 8. And there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth pains. Pestilence is the Greek word loimus, which means a plague. Definition of a plague is any large-scale calamity, especially when thought to be sent by God. God has used plagues in the form of extreme weather in the past, and will again in the future. The seventh plague on Egypt was hail. Don't forget about the famine in Joseph's time. One of the biggest is the flood in the book of Genesis. In the future, during the seven-year tribulation, God will once again use extreme weather in the form of pestilence as judgment. In Revelation 16:21, God uses hailstones weighing 100 pounds each, and great hail from heaven fell upon men, each hailstone about the weight of a talent. Men blaspheme God because of the plague of the hail, since that plague was exceedingly great. In Revelation 16, 8 and 9, God uses scorching heat. Then the fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun, and power was given to him to scorch men with fire, and men were scorched with great heat, and they blasphemed the name of God who has power over these plagues, and they did not repent and give him glory. Climate change is simply Satan's counter to Jesus' signs of his return and the end of the age. So when Jesus Christ warns us that just before his second coming, there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places, you had better believe that these occurrences are a sign from God and that he is about to intervene. Don't let Satan blind you to the gospel of Jesus Christ. The extreme weather the world has been witnessing is not climate change. It is God letting us know our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, is returning. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world, as we know it, is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A, admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him and you will not perish. 
God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! Time is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.